Well, the Detroit Lions are 1-0. Uh, the first week of the season is is almost in the books. we still got one more game tonight because we're recording this on Monday. But, TJ, I'd love to hear your take on, on the Detroit Lions in Kansas City because you were there. What was the environment like first? Oh, it was beautiful. Um, I'm glad I didn't have to play in it because it could uh, you could see where that gets a little intimidating. And well, we both played in uh, loud environments. I don't miss them. Seattle, for me, was always the stadium that yeah. – uh, you know, you, you, you don't real. you don't look forward to playing playing a game there. Um, it might be cool, you know, to look up and be like, "Wow, man, this really is a, a cool place." But at the end of the day, it's tough. And um, for this team to go in there, and you know, I don't want to talk about what Kansas City did and who they had and who they were missing and oh, they dropped passes and oh, they made mistakes. But so did the Lions. I thought the Lions. So did Marvin Jones Jr. You're right. I thought the offense played probably at about a C level from where the expectations are. Um, but that environment was just, uh, the start of the game, we were down there doing the pregame show and, uh, you know, you look around and you're just like, wow, there's a good amount of blue here. Then 10 minutes goes by and you're like, wow, there's even more blue coming in, you know? And, um, it was so cool during the pregame warmups, you know, for all the Lions fans kind of made their way down to the front, uh, in the end zone where the players were and, and to watch the interactions and watching Brad Holmes come out and watching the, uh, the applause that all the players were getting was like, man, like this, this just feels different, you know, and, and for a player, you know, I think anytime you see your fans on the road, it makes it a less hostile environment. And uh, that, that definitely made an impact for those guys. You could tell, you know, pregame during the game, the interactions they were having, the, the, the cheers coming from the Lions fans. I mean, it was a, it was a heck of an environment. And the biggest thing is they came out with a win. Right. You don't want to go into that, that type of, thing. yeah, that's yeah. the only thing that matters. Um, and just to give, just to have that experience for the players and the coaches, um, but also to give that moment to the fans uh, that really haven't, we haven't had a moment like that in a long time um, around this team. That was just, uh, it was incredible. And the fact that we got the whole weekend to enjoy it, like yesterday watching games on Sunday, you're like, my team already won, man. We're yeah. like, there's no Days stress. I'm happy, man. Like this is, <laughs> I just get to chill and watch football and, and laugh at other fan bases now. Like this is, this is great. And you know, you get to celebrate that for a couple extra days, having a long weekend. I thought it was awesome. And the biggest takeaway for me was um, this team can play with anybody. You know, if they're playing, they're playing good, smart, sound, disciplined, tough football. They can beat anybody. Uh, obviously the pick six, uh, catapulted the defense into really having, in my opinion, an, an outstanding day, um, especially when your offense kind of hit a, a rut there for about, you know, second, third quarter and not doing much. Um, not only do you hold Patrick Mahomes and, and that offense uh, to, you know, a couple field goals, but you also get seven points on the board for your own team was huge. Um, but yeah, if you play smart football, don't, you know, we saw the one turnover. Marvin Jones, actually, first first career fumble in 12 years. I mean, to just talk about that that streak of just incredible being a, a reliable guy taking care of the football and then it happens like on his first catch and it's like oh man like in the biggest moment oh, of the season you know, so and, far too. yeah and you feel bad for him at the same time you know you're not exp i don't expect to see that the rest of the season from marvin i know he, he feels the same way but uh just outstanding man it was a heck of a heck of an environment heck of a win um, just so cool to kind of be on the sideline watching the celebration and going in the locker room afterwards and and talking to coach and and talking to some players and um, I'll tell you what nobody was surprised you know nobody was surprised in that yeah. locker room it was almost like we showed up we took care of business let's get the hell back out there. let's get back to Detroit <laughs> back like that's, that's what the vibe felt like it didn't yeah. feel like oh my god we just upset the defending Super Bowl champions like oh my god you know like holy shit it was like no we took care of our business let's go like this is what we expected and that for me was like all right and dan dan mentioned it too you know what'd you learn about your team you know i didn't learn anything i just kind of verified what i already thought and that to me was like damn all right like kind of gave me goosebumps when i heard him say that yeah. so that was just uh, a heck of a night man what a what a great start could you imagine brad holmes and dan campbell you know just two years ago even last year you know when they talked about just hitting rock bottom and everything going against them and just can't find a way to get things going right and you turn around and, and look, I know it's only one game, but you say, oh, my God, like, did anybody think we were going to be here yeah. two years ago? You know, when we when the rebuild was commencing and, and getting started. I mean, did we all think it was going to translate two years later? They're opening up Thursday night football against the defending champs and knocking them off. I didn't. Um, so just incredibly impressive by by everybody involved. Well, and so 
I know that it felt like, you know, in the locker room, you said that like it was, it was kind of expected, like you weren't surprised. And you heard it from Dan Campbell, the verification of what he already knew. Did you see Brad Holmes' reaction after the game? Do you, have you seen the uh, yeah, high five in <laughs> yeah. the fans and stuff? Yeah. Oh man, he is uh... some unbelievable excitement. And and yeah. I, he'll tell you too, like okay, this is what I expected, but um, the actions showed that there was a certain amount of joy and maybe a certain amount of of didn't really expect to be celebrating like that in that moment <laughs> well brad holmes is an emotional guy i mean i don't think i've ever seen a gm so excited after every draft pick after every win yeah. i mean you know he's a guy that doesn't hide uh his feelings and for me I, I look at that video and i even saw him you know in person down there before the game after the game celebrating with the fans and uh for me it's i imagine it's probably validation that he's yeah. doing things the right way you know and that's uh it's easy to question yourself, uh, especially if you're in charge of building the roster and bringing in the right people and the right players. Hey, are we doing it right? We think we're doing it right. We don't really know until we see it, you know, kind of play out. You saw it play out. You saw it get a win. Yeah. You're like, all right, hell yeah. Like it's validation. We're doing it right. You know, and I think that's uh, part of the emotion that we saw uh, from Brad's celebration, at least was, I think we, I think we got something here. Well, so let's talk a little bit about, cause I did a, a quick episode, um, uh, Friday morning, uh, which there was very little sleep. So if you listen to that episode, I actually really have no idea what I said. It was a little, little <laughs> incoherent. Yeah, you uh, you were you were the traveling man Thursday night, Friday morning. You were very busy. Um, but I want to talk about the impact that the first two rounds had on this game. And Jameer Gibbs, let's start with him. I, I know that his his production in that game was it was there. You know, there was quality. Um, you know, it had seven seven carries for forty two yards, uh, and then on the D, on the on, in terms of catching two catches for eighteen yards, so it didn't knock your socks off. But the one thing, it was impressive when he was on the field, and you always felt like there was something special that could happen every time he touched the ball. But I thought we would see more of him in the game plan. Did what did you think of his performance, and did you expect to have more touches, more reps, more opportunity? Yeah, I thought it was noticeable. I mean, you, it, it's a lot of questions, you know, throughout the summer in camp, like, man, this guy's only, you know, 190 pounds. Is he going to be able to sustain, uh, you know, being the lead guy in the backfield? Um, you know, and, th and then this first run, I mean, he bounces off a couple tacklers. He gets smoked by the safety. The safety goes flying. He's still standing, kind of looks down like, yeah. I was like, oh, sh yeah, like not only is this dude fast and elusive, but he, he's got some toughness to him as well. Um I thought his impact was was huge. Um, I maybe expected him a little bit more only because, you know, I know Ben Johnson the last couple of weeks was like, man, we're going to use him in ways, you know, yeah. people might not think. And first couple of drives, I'm like, he's not in there at all. Is that what he meant by nobody <laughs> thinks he, we're just not, I'm not going to use him? Like, I guess that way, I guess he's right too. Um, you know, and then he comes in, he provides a spark. And I, I'm, I wasn't surprised that he didn't get, uh, a huge workload uh, uh, Thursday night. I, I think that anytime, especially week one, you probably want to go with um, guys that, and I'm not saying Jameer Gibbs is unreliable, but guys that have proven yeah. that they're the guy, right? And David Montgomery has done that. He has proven that he is a reliable guy. He has proven that he could be a bell cow uh, running back, right? I don't think you want to throw too much at rookies week one, especially in that environment, especially Thursday night football prime time, they could have a tendency to try to do too much, um, which can backfire and hurt your team. And, and we all know that, you know, they got away with the fumble there, but not many times you're going to turn the ball over against a good yep. team like that and, and uh, come out with a win. I, I thought it was probably a, a well-balanced attack. And I'm sure even starting this week against Seattle, uh, we're going to get a heavier dose of, of Jameer Gibbs. I think that the coaches, throughout training camp practices, whatever you think, you know, right. Uh, all right. Is he ready for a big workload? We don't want to throw that all on the young kid to start the season off. We don't want him to feel like he's got the weight of his shoulders. We want to, you know, kind of work him in a little bit and let him get more comfortable. And as he gets those first couple runs and catches, whatever it is under his belt, let's let him loose. I think we're going to start seeing that um, Sunday against, uh, against Seattle. Jack Campbell, uh, his athleticism was on full display with this past deflection uh, that he had. But, you know, two first-round picks, um, neither of them started, which, again, I'm not going to sit here and criticize that. I really liked when Jack Campbell was in there. I thought he added that tough run defense to be able to, to stuff the, the, you know, the run. 
but I liked his ability to cover running backs and even tight ends out of the backfield. What'd you, what'd you see? I, I didn't see a rookie, you yeah. know, I didn't see a guy that, uh, Kansas City was identifying as being on the field and being a weak link and being a guy they could take advantage of and, uh, you know, trying to get mismatches across the board just to try to expose that. You see that a lot with rookies in this league. Hey, he's on the field. We're going after him. Um, They didn't do that, which to me was kind of a, like, we don't really want to test him. I mean, he did make that play that he made, especially from the end zone view, uh, you know, kind of dropping back to his right last second, flipping the hips, covering about – you know, six, seven yards of grass there in, in about a second to be able to get a hand on that ball uh, was a big-time play. I mean, just just the athleticism that it showed, uh, you know, 6'5", 250-pound guy with that kind of flexibility, that kind of quickness, that kind of agility was uh, was impressive. Uh, that's going to be huge, I mean, because we, we all think that, hey, as this team continues to get better, um, you're going to have games where you force the opposition into throwing the ball. You force the opposition into being one dimensional and you have to have guys that can cover. And I think Jack Campbell proved that uh, at least in the couple limited snaps that we got to see him was there's no really concern there if he does have to try to get in that type of game. Um, so I thought his impact was, was good too. I thought with all the guys, you know, none of them really looked like rookies. None of them really looked like, Oh, yep. He's a rookie Yep, He's going to learn that one. Yep. I, oh, Okay, hey, I bet he's not going to let that one beat him again. Yeah. You know, uh, none of those guys uh, really stood out as doing that. Now they're all going to have a rookie moment at some point this season. I can promise you that. But to at least start the season uh, confident, knowing what they were doing, being in the right yeah. spot, not having you know silly little mental errors and, and costing your team a play or a, a touchdown, um, I thought was huge. Sam Laporta, five targets, five catches. I thought he played a good game. I th- I, I really liked his ability to block as well at the, at the line of scrimmage. He was very effective. And we know Brian branch, like the pick six. Yeah, that was, it was awesome. Both of those guys. I'd like to get your quick thoughts. Oh, Brian branch. I mean, the play on the ball was incredible. Uh, you can't blame Patrick Mahomes for that. It went right through Tony's <laughs> hands and, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, but branch the way that he had to kind of pause, reach back one handed, grab that thing and then finish the play getting in the end zone uh, was huge. You, you saw the playmaking ability. We've heard about it uh, since, OTA started, you know, back in the, in the spring and summer. Uh, we've heard about it all throughout training camp, you know, that all this guy does is make plays, man. And and for him to get the opportunity in, in game one to go out there and not only have a pick six, but against Patrick Mahomes in that environment, you know, in that game where you feel like you needed a spark defensively uh, or else that thing felt like it could have gotten out of control based, of, based on how the offense was kind of struggling. Uh, the play was huge. And I think, you know, with looking at his stats, 38 – uh, coverage snaps, I think it was, uh, or it's 38 snaps. He got targeted four times, allowed two catches for seven yards, yeah. um, you know, in, in his assignment and, and obviously finished with the pick six. I mean, that is an absolute winning performance every day of the week and just an impact type guy. And I'll tell you his development, his ability to be a day one impact player uh, gives that defense and especially that secondary so much more flexibility. Now it opens up to, you know, where do you want to put C.J. Gardner-Johnson? I know we saw him a lot at safety uh, against the Chiefs, but he he's a guy you can move around a little bit. Branch is even a guy that can move around a little bit. The less predictable you are defensively, you know, how you line up and the offense says, okay, they're doing this, the better you're going to be. I think they just have so much flexibility based off of uh, the defensive backs that they have and the moving pieces that they have to be able to put these guys in different spots and, and keep the offenses guessing. Uh, Sam Laporta, look, I, the passing game was noticeable. I mean – you know, being able to get open, uh, being able to catch the ball, being able to fight for a couple extra yards uh, when they were there, I thought was huge. The run blocking d- didn't stick out as being a negative. I mean, yeah. that's been a kind of an Achilles heel. If there has been an Achilles heel on this offense the last couple of years was the ability for their tight ends to be impactful in the run game. Um, and the one play that sticks out was Dave Montgomery's touchdown run late in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he's pulling it all the way across from the left side. Jonah gets a nice kick out on the defensive end. Laporta fills up in the hole, shoulder on shoulder, perfect textbook block on the linebacker. Just enough room for Montgomery to sneak through to make a move, get in the end zone. Um, I thought was was very encouraging to see a young player be able to step up in that position, play that amount of snaps that he did, and to go out there and not only you know not cost your offense, to, but, but to go out there and be actually a, a hell of a productive player. Um, 
Same thing kind of with Branch on the defense. I mean, it's going to allow so many more opportunities for this offense and how you want to utilize guys, how you want to find the mismatches if you're Ben Johnson. How do you want to, you know, figure out what the defense is doing based off of personnel, based off of alignment, motion, shifts, whatever you want to do. I think Laporta is going to be a big part of that moving forward. Now, the big controversy that everybody was talking about, we should we should address it a little bit. I, I think it's been overblown. Uh, Jawan T- Taylor, their right tackle, lining up in the backfield. Uh, and I thought Aiden Hutchinson had a great game. And we'll talk about his performance and his impact on that game in just a moment. But Jawan Taylor, I mean, you could see that he, you know, he was not breaking <laughs> – the waistband of the center. Not even so, close. You know, close. <laughs> Not even so there could have been the, 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 the disadvantage was that the referees never corrected it and it should have been penalties. Yeah. And you and I have both been in games where an official will come up and say, whether it's, hey, you know, make sure you get your hands back inside. You know, I, I could have called holding. I'm going to call it if you do it again. You know, I, I've been as a tackle, I'm going to take every inch possible when I know I'm going against a guy that has speed to get to the edge, the ability to power. I'm going to try and take as much into the backfield as possible on passing downs so that I can get into that I can get to that mesh point, the point that I want to get to before a guy like Aiden Hutchinson does. So I'm going to line up and and I'm I'm curious as to the conversation that was going on in the sidelines. Did did the coaches say or did Aiden or any of the defensive players go up to the official and say uh it really feels like he's lying up in the backfield. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And, I... and they should have warned him and said, "Hey, you know, hey, Taylor, you need to move up a little bit or we're going to call it next time. Didn't feel like they ever did. There were other times where he was timing the snap up and and upon review, I was watching. I'm like, damn, he is literally going right as right the, the, the ball. Yeah. And I think that was a big part during the game. It looked like there was probably nine or 10 false starts, right. but then I was like you, I went back and watched it and it wasn't really the case. I mean, it was oh, more so the rest of up. the rest of the offensive line was a little late getting off the ball. So of course, when you see one guy moving yeah. instead of all five at the same time, you automatically think, Oh, he's early false start. I was, I was like you, I went back and I was like, he's moving literally. And I slowed it down as much as I possibly could. As soon as the ball was moved, yeah. he was moving. And I'm like, you know what? Like, Props to you, man. You know, that's just a, and the rest, just because the rest of the offensive line ain't moving doesn't mean you're early. So, uh, but yeah, the whole alignment issue, I know they brought it up to the officials. I saw them do it uh, probably a couple times. I heard guys after the game talking about it. Um, that to me kind of seemed like a game where the officials wanted to stay out of the way. Yeah. They didn't want to be a part of the story. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think even last year with the Super Bowl, and late in the game when the Chiefs get a holding call that probably was a penalty, but at that point of the game, it drew a lot of attention. It drew there a lot a of criticism on Patrick Mahomes that, that didn't get pro- probably two hits from Hutch yeah. that were maybe a little bit borderline, but you could tell the referees were like, we don't want to call it unless it's something really, no, really in bad. My opinion, it always evens out. There's a give and a take, and if there's a bad call, if you feel like there's a bad call on one side, chances are there's going to be a, a one that follows. One hundred percent, yeah. And I think that even you know, I mean the, the 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 early starts, the right tackle being in the backfield, I don't. Those aren't huge in my opinion. I did think that Kansas City got away with probably three pretty egregious holding calls on some of those pass rush downs. Um, but in the back of your head, you're like, man, I just think the refs just want to let these guys play. Like they don't want to be a story to kick off this season, you know. And uh, it, it felt like it was starting to go the other way, you know. There when uh, they called the pass interference on um, Sutton, yeah. kind of down the middle, and it was yeah. like, all right, was I, clearly you, pass interference. It's like so. you see like minimal contact, but the receiver. Uh, I mean, if the receiver would have went back to the ball, it would have been textbook con or, or um, you know interference. But he didn't do that, and you're like, okay, like. With everything you've let go, you're going to call that one. Come on. It felt like it was starting to turn there, but obviously, you know, it, it worked out for their advantage late in the game. I mean, the officials, you know, called the false start late. The officials called the holding late, uh, and that's what forced Kansas City in that fourth and 25 that ultimately uh, sealed the game for you. So I didn't think the officials were a huge story. Um, Juwan Taylor, I mean, yes, what – he was in the backfield. Like yeah. I, you're not going to get many refs that give you that much leeway uh, if you're an offensive tackle. But the fact that they didn't want to call it, the fact that they were like, God, just go play football. I, honestly, as a player, I think you kind of respect that. Yeah. Well, Aiden Hutchinson definitely went and played football. Uh, it felt like his impact on that game in year two, he had hits on Patrick Mahomes. 
Uh, there were times where he was making plays on running backs, receivers, out past the hash, out past the numbers. He was all over the field. The growth of Aiden Hutchinson from year one to year two, how big of an impact can he have on this season? I I mean, he was outstanding. Yeah. He really was. And the pass rush in general, you know, I know they didn't get a sack on the stat sheet, but um, he disrupted a lot of a lot time. of hurries, a lot of hits. I think seven hits. Uh, Charles Harris on the other side was, in my opinion, just as impactful. I mean, he had a ton of rushes too, where you know, you're playing any other quarterback. I was talking with you know Dan Miller after the game or sitting on the bus and we're both like, man, like uh, any other quarterback, you feel like if that's like Kirk Cousins or something, like you're probably looking at five or six sacks, like guys being in position yeah. to bring the quarterback down. It just it happens to be you're going against Patrick Mahomes. It's very difficult, uh, you know, to bring him down. But I thought the pass rush in general was uh, was really, really good, really encouraging um, against what has been, you know, I know they got a couple new tackles, but Kansas City's offensive line has been pretty damn good. Um, Aiden Hutchinson, though, I mean, it just he's turning into that impact player that we've been hoping to see. And we saw it in glimpses last year. Uh, we saw it early in the season, then we ended up seeing it again late in the season. Yeah. I think the game's we talk about it all the time, the game's slowing down for him. I think he's starting to understand uh how teams want to attack him. I think he's starting to understand, you know, how offensive linemen want to attack him, how they want to block him. Obviously, it was pretty evident with Jawan Taylor setting up so far in the backfield because he was concerned about Aiden's speed. Uh, And then there's a couple times where, you know, Aiden gets the speed going and then, bam, last minute he hits you with a spin move, right? And then you think you got that, boom, he hits you with the spin move again. It's like, holy shit. Like, you know what I mean? You got to keep him guessing. I think the the most impressive part about Aiden's game was the amount of different rushes that we saw. Uh, Last year was a lot of power. Last year he had to learn – I'm not going to bull rush a lot of NFL tackles consistently, <laughs> you know, to 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 be an impact player. I've got to develop other rushes. And I saw probably at least four or five on Thursday night, whether it was a speed rip, whether it was a, a spin move, whether it was the bull rush, whether it was, you know, kind of the fake bull dip. I mean, you're starting to see uh, these moves develop, which is something you need to have in this league. If you want to be that impact player, you don't see many guys anymore that just up, I know what they're going to do, and they're just experts at it, and there's just really nothing you can do to stop it. Um, There's not many guys like that. So Aiden, you know, with with, and even in the run game, I mean, you know, the first play of the game, I know they kind of run a little option at him, but he tracks down the line and keeps it to like a three, four-yard gain, makes a tackle, kind of sets the tone. Later in the game, throw a wide receiver screen out to the boundary, and, you know, from the defensive end position, he's the first one in there making contact. Um, The effort, the hustle, like that's everything that Dan – Dan Campbell he coaches with all of his players. I think Aiden Hutchinson is probably the best right now as, 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 at exemplifying uh, what the Detroit Lions are trying to do and who they're trying to be. He was just, he was outstanding. He was, he was, he was noticeable almost every single snap. And that's extremely encouraging um, to where we expect this defense to be and, and how much better we expect them to get even, even as the season progresses. Two more questions for you, and we'll get into more of a scouting report of the Seattle Seahawks later in the week. But um, firstly, a big investment made in the secondary. And and we knew that they were going to be tested going against Patrick Mahomes. Even if Kelsey wasn't there, they're going to be tested. What do you think of the performance of the secondary? Other than that one you know, PI, which you already yeah. are, are bitching and moaning about. <laughs> well, in the third and 17, but look, you you understand going into this game, guys, it's Patrick Mahomes. He's going to yeah. make a couple plays, right? Like, we can't get down if he makes a, a, a tightly contested throw in a perfect yeah. spot where nobody else can get it except his own guy. You know that's going to happen. Uh, I thought the secondary was really good. I did. I didn't see a lot of free runners, uh, which is something that we saw <sighs> – five six seven times a game you know last year at times just miscommunications all over the place and guys just oh wide open again you know how the hell does that happen uh we didn't see that at all and honestly i thought it kind of felt like they probably had a shot shot to get maybe at least one if not two more interceptions i mean there was a couple times guys are in the perfect spot and just kind of lost track of the ball later ball kind of went through i think cj garner's hands at one point you know had a chance to come up with an interception late in the game um but I thought they were really good. I thought they, I thought it was, it wasn't perfect by any means. I think they, they've still feel like they've got a lot of room to grow. Um, but you're talking about a lot of moving pieces and much like the offensive line, the more you play together, the more chemistry you can build with guys where, 
you know, you don't even have to talk anymore. You just look at each other like, yep, we're on the same page. Yep, I got it. Yep, I know what we're doing. Um, the better you're going to be. And for the first time that we've seen them play as a unit, uh, I thought was extremely encouraging and I thought was probably the best, you know, defensive backfield performance we've seen since maybe four or five years ago when we had Slay and Glover Quinn and Quandre Diggs and those guys that you knew were going to make some plays. I really feel like this secondary for the first time in at least Dan Campbell's tenure has a chance to be difference makers, has a chance to be ball hawks, has a chance to be guys that you know are going to give you one pick a game that are going to be in the right spot to, to make those plays. So um, much like the rest of the defense, I, I was extremely pleased with, with the performance. So going into the Seattle game, I'm going to ask you this question about what needs to improve. Uh, for me, the offense, I just want to have more consistency, more production. And some of it's going to start with that run game being more effective throughout four quarters and not having those drives where, hey, you know, in, on first down, you only pick up two yards. I'd rather have second and four, you know, second and five, second and six, and be a little bit more productive on first down. Uh, and then, you know, be able to take the top off the defense. I don't know. I don't know that we're going to see that if we have somebody that can actually do that. Maybe it's Amon Ross St. Brown, but they're using him in so many different ways. Uh, we won't see it maybe until uh, J-Mo comes back. Hopefully that's a part of what he adds to this offense. But for you, what is it that you want to see this team do better and be better at going into the Seattle game? Uh, I think the first thing is third down, right? I mean, they, they were only 5 of 15 on third downs and um, – Gosh, I think three of those come in late in the fourth quarter. You know, yeah. um, you're not going to be in many games, you know, unless your defense continues to play really good football, uh, be, not being able to convert first downs, not being able to uh, at least get yourself in scoring position to give yourself more opportunities to put points on the board. Uh, third downs have to improve. And, and like you said, I mean, that kind of starts on first and second down. You can't put yourself in third and eights, third and nines, and, and expect to convert a whole lot of those. You've got to be better on first down, so you give it an opportunity. Hey, third and two, they don't know if we're running. They don't know if we're passing. Now that kind of opens up uh, the playbook a little bit more. And, gosh, I'm, I'm really on the same page with you, John. I want to see a little bit more uh, big plays, a little bit more explosion uh, from this offense. I know they have the talent. I know they feel like they have the speed to do it. I know, I know we, that they're better at home than they are on the road. A hundred percent. And that's kind of been, you know, Jared's MO is you look at the stats home compared to road and it's a big difference. So mm -hmm. I do expect them to get better there this week coming back at, at Ford field, but I feel like you're missing that explosion piece. You know what I mean? And it feels like Jameer Gibbs could be that piece. The more he gets acquainted into this offense and the more that they start to just kind of let him loose a little bit, whether yeah. that's in a receiver role or whether that's, uh, you know, giving more snaps in the backfield. I think he's really the one guy in that offense right now that you look at and say, yeah, he's got a chance to take everything to the house. I mean, he's just he looks that good. Yeah. Um, so that's for me. It's it's just it's the big play. I do want to see that because that is gonna have to be a part of your offense. you you can't just line up and throw a bunch of short passes, intermediate passes. The the defense is gonna completely change how they play. They're gonna closer to the line. It's gonna be tougher to run the ball, right? It's gonna be tougher to throw those play action passes, which is your bread and butter. Um, so I'd like to see them start to let it loose, to start let it rip a little bit more downfield, especially when you get um, some of those one-on-one -on -one opportunities, which they had a lot of against Kansas City because Kansas City pressured the hell out of them. Um, take advantage of those one-on-ones. Give your give your give your guys a chance to to go downfield and make big play. Well, ultimately, the only thing that matters is that they're one and zero. Seattle is coming to town. They're going to get the home opener. It's going to be exciting. We'll have more uh, of a scouting report leading up to the game this Sunday. Uh, TJ will be on the sidelines. I'll be watching from the, the comfort of my own living room, but uh, we'll make sure that we give you a little bit of a scouting report, like I mentioned, as we get closer to game time and hopefully the Lions starting off this season 2-0. Uh, we'll get all of that information to you as well as all season long, your Lions information. Keep it tuned right here for Necessary Roughness.